Blue school number 41, <laughs> Kylie King. Uh, yeah. Yay. Yay. Thanks very much for being here, and thanks for providing me with this opportunity to talk about my opinion. As my family can attest, I never say no, and this is a more formal and fun platform than I am usually provided. So uh, the specific opinion I'm here to talk about today is how we might approach life entrepreneurially. So first things first, when I say entrepreneur, who comes to mind? Who do you think of? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah. Shout him. Gary Vaynerchuk. Bill Gates. People from Shark Tank. Yeah. So the people I think of are many, many of those same as you talked about. Um, Mark Zuckerberg, Peter Thiel, Reid Hoffman, people who have started businesses. And that is because, uh, likely, in the US English Dictionary, entrepreneurism is defined as involving um, organizing and operating a business and financial risk taking. So that makes sense. So we're thinking of people who are starting and running businesses. Interestingly, the word entrepreneur is French and is comprised of two verbs, which mean to enter and to take. So an alternative way of thinking about entrepreneurism is thinking about undertaking. And you can undertake a number of different things. The undertaker sounds very foreboding, um, but you can undertake challenges in your personal life, in business certainly, in athletic endeavors. You can undertake things in a number of different ways. So I argue that entrepreneurial thinking can be applied far beyond businesses and into most things that we do. So there are a number of different things that go into entrepreneurial thinking, and I'll spend the next few minutes talking about five of my favorites. Creativity, risk-taking, um, managing and planning for failure, crises, changing conditions, managing resources, and having confidence. So the first piece, creativity. When it comes to creativity, Motivation is far more important than expertise or skills. And motivation can come in two forms. Extrinsic motivation, which are things like salaries or grades, or intrinsic motivation, which relates more to your passions and your interests. And so if you think about trying to expand your creativity, you really want to focus on the intrinsic motivation behind that, and in doing so, focus on what are you passionate about and what are you interested in. And that sounds like a lot of fun, right? Exploring your passions and interests. So how can you do this? You can try new things. You can keep doing things that you love. I know that personally some of my best and most creative ideas come to me when I am doing things like swimming or biking or running. Um, so step one, try to explore those passions and interests and see what creativity comes of that. So this requires my second point, which is an action orientation and a proactive attitude toward life. So entrepreneurism and entrepreneurial thinking is about getting out there and making things happen for yourselves. Um, I do believe that some things happen that are beyond, outs that are beyond our focus of control. Um, and so I think that a nice quote that describes this level of agency we have as well as fate that's involved is that the future enters us to be transformed within us long before it ever occurs. I think that this gets at really nicely the level of control that we can exercise over our futures, as well as things that happen that we just need to react to. Which brings me to my third point. Entrepreneurs are able to react to changing conditions, to prepare for and react to crises, and to manage failure. So admittedly, this is the point that I have uh, the hardest time with myself. I love having a plan, and I love when things go according to that plan. But what I've learned to do, and what I continue to try to do, is look at changing conditions as opportunities and try to say, how can I take advantage of this new situation? To change my mind frame and not bemoan my misfortune for whatever changes have occurred, but to see how I can use that to my advantage. A fourth behavior of entrepreneurial thinking is the ability to manage the resources around you. Recognizing your strengths, but also recognizing your limitations and seeking to fill the void where you need skills but you don't have them. So this relies on having a network of people, certainly, so knowing who you can surround yourselves with, who have skills that are complementary to your own, um, but also managing the world of information that is around you. So there are a number of books and podcasts and articles and TED Talks that relate to any type of um, 
adventure that I previously talked about. So whether it's signing up for an athletic event, um, starting a book, running for office, there are a number of non-human resources that you can use to your advantage. Entrepreneurial thinking is recognizing when you need those resources and being able to call on them. My fourth, or sorry, my fifth and final point on what does it take to be an entrepreneur is related to failure and acceptance of failure. So failure in some ways gets um, a bad reputation or in some ways it's over fetishized when you hear about people bragging about losing billions of dollars or those typical Silicon Valley entrepreneurs who have failed and use that to try to uh, make themselves sound more like risk takers and more appealing. I think failure can be used to your advantage and again that relates to looking at changing conditions and trying to maximize opportunities there. So if any of this is true, and I would argue that it is, right, um, then I think that there are two reasons why this is important. The first being that I think entrepreneurial skills can be taught. So there's a big debate of is entrepreneurism inherent to people or is it something that can be learned? I'm not saying that every one of us can and should go out there and start a business. What I am saying is that every one of us can use these entrepreneurial behaviors to improve our lives and to improve ourselves. The second point is that I think we've all heard some variation of the statistic that 75% of the jobs that today's college students will have in the future have not yet been created. And this obviously necessitates the need for approaching problems creatively, being open to new challenges and experiences, and being able to take risks and put ourselves out there to make things happen. So a caveat. I'm here talking about how this entrepreneurial mindset is super important and not always related to businesses. And I myself teach classes on starting businesses and advise students who are working to start their own businesses. But I promise that I would use this stuff even if that wasn't the case. I think when it comes to entrepreneurial thinking and learning, there can be three goals. The first, learning about entrepreneurship, which hopefully happens in some of my classes. Um, the second, learning to become an entrepreneur, which is more of a focus of incubators, accelerators, workshops, or lecture series. And the third, learning to think entrepreneurially, which I believe can and should be applied to everyone, everywhere. So thank you. Thanks, everyone.